So summertime now into full swing, which is great news. Hopefully you're having a chance to get outside and enjoy the longer days. But once nighttime rolls around, could be a little bit harder to fall asleep. So we're so well, happy to welcome Dr. Vince Viscomi here from the Sleep Center at CHI Memorial. Good to have you. Great to be here. You are our seasonal doctor and we're always happy to see you because with the time change and the seasonal changes, I guess the internal clock of our body changes, right? And sleep can become difficult. Yeah, the, the body has a lot of light cues. So uh, the uh, ability to go to sleep is, is to the time clock. And that's why people that work shifts and whatnot have a hard time with that, because a lot of our internal cues are based on that. And of course, when it's light later and light earlier, it makes it a little harder to do that. So you're going to give us some helpful tips as we go through our conversation this morning. But one that you just shared with me, I did not know, is that your body sleeps better in the cool. I always knew I slept better when in a cool room, but that's a biological fact. Absolutely. When your body temperature is falling, it's a lot easier to go to sleep. So if you think about it, if you like exercise in the evening, exercise is alerting and it's harder to go to sleep then. But if you go to a place where the body is cooling down, like it's a hot day, you're in an air conditioned place and your body temperature falls, it's just easier to go to sleep. So you want to try to do something in the evening, like if you take a bath an hour or so before, a nice warm shower bath, then your body temperature is falling. Take a cold shower bath, then that drops your temperature and your body temperature rises and it makes you gotcha. alert. So that's why the cold shower wakes you up and a warm shower can help you go to sleep. That makes a lot of sense. Now you also said we all sort of have this built-in uh, timer in our body. The mm -hmm. melatonin begins to be released around 9 30 or 10. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have that luxury though of having a steady schedule. It's okay to take melatonin. Oh absolutely, especially shift workers. So anyone trying to go to sleep during the daylight hours, you can take the melatonin that your body would naturally make but doesn't because it's light out. So darkness is the key to melatonin production. And if you don't make that because it isn't dark, you can take yourself and it really helps shift workers go to sleep. Okay, we both have kids that are, you still have teenagers at home, don't mm -hmm. you? Okay, yes. same here. So we both can speak the same argument. Summer is out, I mean, school is out, summer is here. Your kids are probably staying up later, mine are too. But that then messes up their sleep patterns, right? It does. Uh, teenage and adolescence is the one time that our biologic time clock changes. We release melatonin later and we produce it later. That's why teenagers and early college kids can go to sleep late and sleep late. We can't do that. I can't get up at noon, mm -mm. Uh, but my kids sure can. <laughs> and the reason is that they can release melatonin later and do it later. That's why schools are trying to maybe start a little later because of this melatonin change that adolescents have. So for any parents listening, if your kids are sleeping in, maybe they have to go to camps or something during the day, but if they're sleeping in on a Saturday morning, let them, they need it. It's natural and, and it's, uh, it's part of their, their biologic time clock. Kids in their late teens, early 20s, not kids I guess, but they need a little more sleep. With all the hormone production, the transition from being a child to being an adult, you need more sleep as an adolescent. Adults need about seven and a half hours. Kids need about eight and a half hours, and they don't get it. They're the most sleep deprived segment of the population. It makes them grumpy. Mm -hmm. Ever have a grumpy teenager? <laughs> and forgetful. Every other day? Uh, absolutely. So, so if you can help them get that little more sleep, in the summer, sleep a little later. Okay. The other thing I ask folks to consider is as school gets closer, have them start to get up earlier. Mm -hmm. Because that transition from I'm sleeping in till 10, until now I got to get up early, it's really hard to do that in short order. So a couple of weeks before I said, okay, start to move that sleep time gradually up right. an hour every couple of days, makes starting school a lot easier. One reason too we all do it is that you tend to forget, I'm sure this happens to a lot of people where you'll think it's eight o'clock and you look at the clock and it's 9.30 because the days are longer. Yep. Uh, a lot of stores now carry the dark blackout curtains. Do you like those? Are they helpful? Uh, blackout curtains are certainly helpful. Anything that makes it dark starts to make your body make this melatonin. And so in a dark room, if you, you're able to make that melatonin a little more easily, and anything that is light that hits the back of your eye is something that helps you stay awake. Blue light is the worst. And so you think cell phones mm -hmm. and all the electronic devices, the TVs in the bedroom. If you have trouble sleeping, that could be part of the problem. Okay. Of course, you don't have any trouble sleeping, not necessary. Okay. But if it's a problem sleeping, try to eliminate that for about 20 minutes before bed would be helpful. Now let's get to the sleep center. 
uh, you do you are able to help people who have sleep apnea and that types of things but people who are just having difficulty in general they can come to you on their own unless their insurance company asks for a referral correct if you're not required to have a referral we certainly don't require it and what, I, what we look for is the very first question is do you feel refreshed when you wake up if you do you probably don't need us Okay. On the other hand, if you wake up tired, there's usually something we can do to help you. And it just begins, I guess, with a conversation of finding yeah. out their history and their patterns every, right. every day? And most times, unless you're looking for sleep apnea or narcolepsy, you usually don't need a sleep study. You do if you have those issues, but otherwise, usually some sort of either behavioral modification and occasionally medication can be helpful. Does it tend to run in families? Uh, narcolepsy for sure, and sleep apnea because of body builds. So both of those do run in families, although for one's more of a genetic and one's more of a kind of body build issue. Okay, so the good news for all you parents out there, I think, is that when your kids are sleeping in and you're having that extra cup of coffee and no one's saying, hey, can you make breakfast? Enjoy it. That's it's right. natural. Uh, but if you're having trouble, you can always contact Dr. Viscomi at the CHI Memorial Regional Sleep Center. Good to see you. Good, always. Thank you for Enjoy having me. Enjoy the summer with your teenagers. I will do that best I can. <laughs> we are back after this.